All right, so welcome to what will be the last video in this series on what to do if your book stops selling and how to go about fixing the problem. Um, there will probably be a recap video uh, just as a final thing to sort of sum up everything. Uh, but this video comes with a very, very stern disclaimer and caution, and I need you to take this seriously, okay? This video is going to discuss networking, okay? But I need to make it very clear that you do not, do not, do not use people ever, period. Whether for something small, something big, whether professionally or personally, don't use people. It is wrong, it's an insult to the person, it's disrespectful, it's dishonorable, and likewise, it's an insult to yourself because you're sinking that low, all right? <clears throat> so do not ever use people. It doesn't matter who they are, what their station is, if people know who they are, if people don't know who they are, doesn't matter. Do not ever, ever use people, okay? So that's my very stern disclaimer for this, so nothing is misinterpreted, all right? All right, so we're going to talk networking, okay? Let's define that, okay? Because now, nowadays, especially in the digital arena, all right, networking is basically joining a writer's group and then a pile of writers <laughs> marketing their books to other broke writers who are marketing their books to other broke writers. So there is no networking there. Okay, what you need to do is this, all right? Networking means talking to your peers and colleagues in the field and talking shop with them. Not just methods and, and that stuff. I mean, that's all fine and good and it's fun to discuss other processes with people, but what you can do is talk. How are you moving your book? What are you doing that's different than me? What do you have to offer me in terms of our conversation, our friendly conversation, again, not using our friendly conversation about the business um, that I did not observe, right? Because remember in the previous videos, basically it covered stuff that you can observe from the outside, right? But when you have conversations and you're networking, you're going to receive information that you cannot get from the outside looking in. You're, this is from the inside looking out. In this, in this respect, it's the opposite. Right. And my experience has been with networking with people, with dedicated creators, people who are dedicated to making fun books. And, you know, whether they're self-published, whether it's through a traditional publisher, um, it doesn't matter. The point is that they offer these insights and these little tips and tricks that don't get broadcasted. Right. They don't go on social media or they don't go on their Web page and they don't, you know, and say, hey, I just have this tiny little thing I'm going to share with you. No, it doesn't really happen. It's usually it's just stuff that they do because they learned it from someone else or they learned it from their own experience that it works. OK, so this is about sort of whether you're going to do this online or whether you're going to do this offline. Um, it doesn't matter. The point is, though, it's learning from each other. It's about finding out information that you cannot get at first glance. It's, it's information that you can only obtain by conversation, right? And that is what I am encouraging because, case in point, networking in the past has landed me short story sales. It's landed me agent with New York. It's landed foreign contract deals. It's landed mass market deals, okay? Networking works that's the side that this unfortunately this stupid digital publishing boom is ignoring is that people are just shoving their crap out there in terms of the digital side of things and then they do the digital marketing thing where it's writers marketing to writers and that's their version of networking no networking is creating your stuff you know if you want to use the digital technology fine but i'm not and again fully against AI use, fully against. Um, but anyway, yeah, when you want to use digital tools, fine. But you have to get to the non-digital stuff. And the non-digital stuff is the person behind this, right? And that's who you got to talk to. And that's where you get some tips. That's where you get some tricks. That's where you learn things that you never thought of before. 
that's where you can then do, as we discussed in previous videos, right, the trial and error thing, right? Give it a try. Give it some time. Give that little secret thing a try. I mean, let's just do a case in point. Um, here's one. Uh, this is very basic, okay? But I learned this from networking, all right? And this was years and years and years ago. But here we go. Networking, talking about, I was talking shop with somebody, and we were talking about doing conventions and shows and whatever else. And one thing they said was, do what you do. I said, what? And they said, give the book to the reader, the one that you're, you're trying to sell, put it in their hand, right? Give them the power to hold it and therefore imply that they have the choice regarding the purchase of the book. But by having it in their hand, subconsciously, your brain goes, um, takes on sort of a position of ownership, right? That's just how it is. It's no different than when we go to the store and we buy a new pair of shoes or we we go to get a, even a new coffee mug or even a, if you're a collector, you do a collectible, right? When you have it in your actual hand, you're physically holding it. There's a sense of ownership, right? And if you have a sense of ownership about something, you're more inclined to purchase it as opposed to not, as opposed to just seeing it on the shelf or in this case of books or comics, you know, just seeing them on the table uh, at the creator's uh, station. Okay. So that was a, a trick I learned. And you know what? It works. All right. That's not manipulating the other person. It's simply catering to the potential experience that they can have as a reader. Right. When you give a reader a book and they hold it, not only do they have that sense of ownership, but they're also kind of subconsciously imagining, hey, you know, I wonder how this story is going to go. The one I'm holding in my hand, I, I, I have more interest in it now because I'm holding it. I'm flipping through it. I'm looking at it, you know, that kind of stuff. And it leans more towards a sale in that regard, right? They might put the book right back down and that's okay. And you don't, you know, don't say anything, right? You just, Hey, that's their choice, man. But you gave them the, the, the real true opportunity to choose by sticking it in their hand. You put the power in their court, right? And we, as consumers, myself included, right? For anything, it could be food, it could be collectibles, it could be books, comics. The point is we'd like to have that control of purchase decision. Do we not? right? We don't like to be told how we spend our money, right? So if you have, so when you go to buy something and you make the choice to purchase it, that's your power. It makes you feel good, right? What we don't realize is, of course, you know, we're, we're partially being marketed to and that's kind of influencing our decision. But regardless, we still have that sense of empowerment, you know? So that's a trick I learned from networking. That's a basic example, but it proves the point. So in summation, talk to people. What are you doing that I can't observe from your website, that I can't observe from your social media, that I can't observe from people re who post reviews of your stuff, that I can't observe from the public statements you've made, that I can't observe any other way other than talking to you directly? You know, that kind of stuff. So that's what networking is about. It's about making connections, about forming relationships. And that's the key part too. When you network, you're making a relationship. Okay. Right. Professional relationship, a business relationship, right? They might become your friends and that's great. Right. But at the same time too, we all know from, you know, any of us with a working life knows that your professional relationship with somebody at work you may also have a, per, a personal relationship with them, you know, like a friendship or something, but there is that division between the two, right? Because you're working, right? The work side, the personal side. So it's the same idea here, right? You don't, and don't dive in, you know, immediately starting to network in terms of what can you tell me? What can you tell me? What can you tell me? No, no, no. Form a relationship. Show some interest in the other person and genuine interest, authentic interest, right? Like you, that you actually like what they're doing, like that you're actually into what they're doing. That's important. And, and yeah, so do that. Form a relationship. Start talking shop. And just, you know, you can pick their brain a bit. They might pick yours. Regardless, then that's when you can start finding out little tricks, inside tips, etc. right? So relationship first, then the learning component uh, after that. And then from there, who knows what else you're going to get. Um, from the various people you connect with, right? So don't limit yourself uh, in regards to the networking too. Of course, you know, those within the genre um, that you work in are key people, of course.
course. Uh, but two, people who are in other genres are also key people. Because even though the genre might be different, there are certain, as we discussed in previous videos, principles that apply you know, across the board. So you might learn something from that other genre that would apply to your genre. So again, networking, talk shop, be open to learning, be open to correction, and be open to offering. Share what you know. This isn't a competition, okay? If you share with them your knowledge of stuff that they haven't thought of, they're inclined to share with you stuff that you not have thought of. So, network, okay? Don't use never, ever, never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever. It doesn't matter what the incentive might be. <laughs> Don't use people. It's wrong. It is wrong. It is wrong. But networking is right. So that's my last little tip. Network properly to learn. And it, like all things with learning, it takes some time maybe. It might take some practice for it to click, right? No different than learning, say, a new math formula, right? It takes a little while sometimes for it to click in the old noggin. Same idea, right? So, but the networking will help. Okay, this is about 11 minutes long, longer than I meant. But at the same time, I had to do some illustration. So I hope you got the point. Network healthily do not use people and we'll come back maybe a little bit later for a summation video for this little series if you want more like actual do this do that do that do that do that type of stuff um hook up with my patreon page i got creator exclusive essays and articles on there for market specific techniques and tricks that um i i don't you know publicly share often so go there hook up and there's a pile of stuff already there regarding bookmarking in terms of, you know, try this, try that, try this, try that, do this, do this, do this. Here's why, you know, here's why it works. Here's why this part doesn't work, etc. Right. So consider that, please. Other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed this little series. And again, find some people who are just as motivated as you to make a go at it, to really get somewhere with this and network and learn and together as a group. Right? Team effort. There's no I in team. Right? Team effort. You learn from each other. We all go forward. Okay? Peace.